Hiya, my name's David, I'm the Wandering Ponderer. I'm right at the top of the town today. Um, I'm on the Colchester Road, heading to Colchester. And roads are the subject of today's video. This is Colchester Road and like all roads in the UK they've got a bit of history but this bit of Colchester Road here all along here was changed in the 1980s changed to accommodate the rising and increasing traffic needs but also to stop the cars and the damage caused by the noise from all the trucks roaring through on their way towards Stansted Airport. Stansted. They obviously needed to bypass the main route. The original part of Colchester Road is up there. But that's all changed now. The traffic used to come down here, down this road, and down towards the town through East, East Street and up West Street and on towards Braintree. This is an original road built many, many years ago. Obviously not tarmacked, but this is this whole route used to stem, start from Colchester and go all the way to St Albans. It was a Roman road that went under the name of Stain Street. Very little of the original Roman road actually exists but there is a small part that does exist and that's underneath the chapel pub in the town centre which shows some remains of the original Stain Street Roman road. The thing about the Roman road is that it was built by the military. Roman military. And if you know your history, you know how well the Roman roads were engineered. Which brings us to our subject today. Now, Jeff in America has sent me uh, an, an American Vista video which is what inspired me to do this segment. I want to cover the Roman road in a future video, which I will do. But for now, I want you to see this video that Jeff sent about the highways in America. Hello everyone, it's Jeff again. I would like to take you on a little adventure across America on Interstate 80. And I'll have some interesting things to show you and a very interesting story. At least I think it's very interesting. A story to tell you about how things sometimes work out better than expected. 
I would like to begin by telling you this little bit about this gentleman standing right here who was tasked with the idea of taking a military convoy across America. It was 1919. And his superiors came to him and said they were concerned if there was a war with another country, if they could get military convoys all the way across America. So they set out to go from coast to coast in military vehicles and trucks. As you can imagine, it didn't go well. The trucks got stuck, the trucks broke down, there was no paved roads, there was mountains to cross, rivers to ford. It was a absolute disaster. It was also something that this young military officer never forgot. All that he had to go through to cross America in 1919. After it was all over, there was high-level meetings in the military and it was discussed the problems that they had gone through and all of the hardships, but not a whole lot was done about it. As a matter of fact, very little changed clear up until the time of World War II. That young military officer from 1919 ended up getting to tour most of Germany after World War II, and he was pretty amazed by the Autobahn. You see, that young military officer was now Dwight Eisenhower. When he became President Eisenhower, there was a couple things that he wanted that he first saw over in Germany at the end of World War II. One of them was the Autobahn, and the other one was Fanta. So after he became president, one of the first things he did was started building highways. And where did he start? Missouri. But the highway I want to talk about today is Interstate 80, because basically I am crossing it pretty much from coast to coast. Although I rarely go I-80 across Pennsylvania because it's not a good road. It is nowhere near as easy to drive on as I-76, the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The Pennsylvania Turnpike truly is an amazing road. I enjoy driving on it a great deal, although they seem to have had trouble with their tunnels. They seem to have built a tunnel and said, no, wait a minute, that's not a good tunnel. We need to build another one. No, wait a minute, we've decided we don't like where that tunnel is either. We'll dig another one. But other than the long list of abandoned tunnels they left, it truly is an amazing road. After the Pennsylvania Turnpike, you go on the Ohio Turnpike. And then you cross over into Indiana. Indiana quickly fades away and you find yourself in Illinois. After crossing through Chicago, it's a short drive and you find yourself in Iowa. You don't have to go very far into Iowa before you come to this, the world's largest truck stop in Walcott, Iowa. Every year they have the Jamboree where you can bring your truck and show it off to everybody and they have contests for who has the best truck and they also have the museum for vintage trucks. It really is a very interesting thing to see. Once you get past all of this, it's not very long before you find yourself in Nebraska. And that is really where our story takes off. Nebraska on Interstate 80 has some really cool things to see, like this, a museum devoted to westward expansion built directly over the highway. And if you look at a wider view, you will notice those wonderful lakes off to the side of the highway. More on those later. There is also a little museum in Gothenburg, Nebraska on I-80 that has a little sod house built. It's really quite interesting to see. And then you come to this quaint little roadside park right off of I-80 that is really, truly amazing. And now we're at the part of this adventure where there was a short story I wanted to tell you. When they built Interstate 80 across Nebraska, 
they lacked the sand and gravel they needed for road building because the native sand and gravel that's near the surface is limestone and it is worthless for road building. So someone came up with the idea of digging down through the glacial layers to get the sand and gravel they needed instead of hauling it in from far away. And so they dug down and sure enough, they hit suitable sand and gravel for road building. Well, this whole area is directly over the Ogallala Aquifer. So these holes that they dug ended up filling full of water and they are absolute havens for wildlife. Ducks, geese, fish, the fishing in these little lakes is incredible. And because there's one of these lakes every few miles over the length of the interstate, they have become absolute havens for wildlife. So when you think that road building and modern construction always ends up being bad for wildlife, this is one instance where it didn't. This is one instance where they might have actually left the area for wildlife better than they found it. Next, we enter into the Platte River country, which is a truly amazing river. It flows for hundreds and hundreds of miles, and yet at any point you can wade across it and not get the tops of your shoes wet. It is a very shallow river that just kind of meanders along for hundreds of miles, and you could literally wade across it at any point. Through the central part of Nebraska, you cross it many, many, many times on I-80. Thank you for joining me on this little trip across America on I-80. In the next installment, I will continue on and I will take you to a place that is known as the Great Basin. I believe that it has a couple of interesting stories to tell. Be good to one another. Think good thoughts, do good deeds, and I will see you again on the next installment of An American Vista. Thank you, Jeff. I never knew how the American highways came into being. That's a little bit of interesting history. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Keep watching the channel for part two of Jeff's American Vistas. He's got some amazing places to go to. So I'm looking forward to that. And I will see you in the next video. Stay safe. <music>